today we are not at the sawmill. I'm actually just now passing the state line here from South Carolina going into Georgia. It's Thursday and my buddy Jake Dean down at the Custom Sawyer headquarters in South Georgia is having his annual sawmill project this weekend. It'll be Friday and Saturday and I always try to go to it every year. It's a real good time. So a good chance for a lot of guys to get together that run sawmills to share knowledge and kind of uh, throw ideas off each other. My goodness, there's another one guys. I bet I've passed about, I'd say at least 30 Dollar General since I left Tennessee. I went through North Carolina, South Carolina, and now we're in Georgia, and I tell you, you can't drive five miles without seeing the Dollar General. They're everywhere. So anyways, it's about, what is it? It's about 1.30. I'm hoping to get there. Judging by my GPS, it says I've got about two hours left. So hopefully we'll get there before Jake's done solid for the day and see what he's into. And if he is done working for the day, then I'll go around and give you guys a tour of his operation because every year when I go down here, he has new equipment every year. I think he's got several new machines since last year. And I'll be doing a separate video for Friday and Saturday showing the sawmill that's going to be going on. He'll be doing some different sawing techniques and all kinds of stuff going on. A real good time. Make for some good videos. So anyways, guys, I'm going to cut the cameras off and try to get down here before the rain starts. It looks like it might rain as well, judging by the clouds. And I also need to find somewhere to eat lunch at. I was hoping to find a chip filet, but I've not seen one yet. Stay in the right three lanes. Stay in the right three lanes and get over because that concrete truck right there is not going to stop. Anyways, guys, I'm going to cut this camera off so I can focus on the road. Hopefully the next stop will be Chick-fil-A. Then after that, Jake Dean's place. You guys hang in there. All right, guys, Jake is bringing over some more wood for the burn pile. All right, guys, as you can see, I'm not the only person that burns their scraps. Look at there, Jake is a pro sawyer, goes through a lot of board footage, and what's he do? He burns his scraps. That's what most people do, guys. Hey, Chief. Well, there we got Chief, and there we got Robert. Hobby Hardwoods hey, is with us. I'm videoing another YouTuber videoing a YouTuber. Videoing a dog. All right, and if you haven't done it yet, there's a link down below. Go check out Robert's channel. You'll learn more about sawmilling from him than you will me, trust me. I don't know about that. Uh-oh. Oh, dog. What's the other dog's name? Hmm. We're down here at Jake's backhoe and the battery's dead. Robert's filming it. Jake's working on it. That's yeah. the way it's supposed to be. All right, this is supposed to be the baddest son of a bitch on the planet next to me. <laughs> yeah, right. we'll see. Well, they don't know. No co boost. No co boost. That's a no co boost. Look at there. That's a <laughs> it's pretty good. The reason I showed that is because Jake's been bragging about that battery uh, booster for a long time. That works pretty good right there. That John Deere was dead and it started right up. It's called a no-go boost. I think I'm saying that right. I'm not sure about it.
good boy, Chief. My ride or die right there, brother. All right, guys, it is about eight o'clock here at Jake Dean's place. When I got here, it was raining so hard, I couldn't film anything. We finally quit, we got the fire going, we just had dinner, and I'm gonna give you guys a short tour of his operation here, then probably call it tonight, come back tomorrow, cause that's when the project officially starts, is tomorrow, and it carries over into Saturday. So if you've seen me do these videos in the past, this may be old hat to you, but I'll kind of walk around and show some of his equipment off because every year, like I was saying, he's always got something new. And I see a few new machines here already. So right there is one of his piles of logs. Looks like we got a lot of yellow pine right there. Yellow pine is very popular down here in South Georgia and they get some really nice pine down here. Check that out. Limited knots and gum barrels right there. Look at those, nice and straight. Really good logs. I don't get pine logs like that up in Tennessee. So right here is his sharpening equipment. He has all his bandsaw sharpeners in there, his chainsaws, all that stuff. Right there behind that building, he's got some storage for some air drying. And over here in the front is actually his lumber kiln. He has a Nile L200, the same kiln that I have in that building right there. I think he can maybe do 6,000 board feet in that kiln. I'll have to ask him, I can't remember. For you guys that are interested in building your own kiln, I'm pretty sure Jake had this one built. It does have a Nile unit in it, but it is a home-built kiln. Very well insulated. And also didn't point that out, but right here we have another stretcher for air drying behind the logs. It looks like a tall carport building. He's got a lot of pine in there. and looks like some slabs in the back. He's also got machines everywhere. You guys saw the uh, loader a few minutes ago loading up the burn pit. He's also got a John Deere backhoe. Uh, right there, we've got a new Holland skid steer. He's got a John Deere skid steer on the other side of the building. I think it's a trap machine. Over here is something new, if I can pronounce this right. Right there, a Komatsu. That's a giant excavator. I think he bought that last year. He's been doing a lot of dirt work back here on the back of his property. That right there is brand new. He didn't have that last year. But right here, friends, is something I would love to have, a nice, big sawmill building. Check this thing out. Out of all the things he has, I am always envious of this giant building right here. Look at all this dry, covered storage right here. And tons of lumber in here. Let's walk in here. It's probably gonna be a little dark, but we'll see what we can see. All right, so this right here is interesting for some of you guys. He's got a stack of lumber. I'm not sure if this is cypress or pine. And once again, sorry about the lighting. And it looks like he's got the fans on this to pre-dry it for the kiln. I've done this before as well. It works really good. So right here is the slab miser. It's made by wood miser. And this right here flattens live edge slabs or it can be anything, I guess. I want it to be live edge. So you put your slab on the table. Right there is the system that runs over top of it. And it's pretty much like a large router that comes down and flattens your slabs. And this is a really long table. I think this is about 16 foot. Then over here is the main sawmill area. You guys will see this thing in action tomorrow. And when I say nobody saws like Jake Dean, I mean nobody saws like Jake Dean. You guys will see that tomorrow. He's exciting to watch on this thing. He runs an LT70. I think it's got a cat diesel engine on it. Who knows how many hours is on this mill. He's had it for a long time. He's actually got two of them. And over there is his John Deere track loader. Really nice track machine right there. Now back here in the back is something else. This will look a whole lot better tomorrow, guys. Trust me. That's his edger and it's made by Baker. That's another good tool to have. This is a major major sawmill operation right here. This is not no little weekend warrior type deal. This guy is a pro. Now I'm not just saying that because he's my friend. He definitely saws a lot of lumber here. That right there is a giant stack of cypress. That's something you won't never see in Tennessee that I know of. He's got another telehandler right there for probably unloading log trucks. A lot more pine back there in the back and more yellow pine over there. And right there is a pipe, and that's the collection system for the sawdust. It comes all the way out there and goes into a container. And I'm pretty sure he sells his uh, sawdust here. 
I'm not sure who to, but I think he sells it. Got more slabs right back there in the back. And this is another view of that building I was just bragging on a minute ago. And something else to mention, he's got that jointer in there. He's got a table saw. He's got a four-sided molder. He's got a double-sided planer. All that stuff is piped in to that dust collector right there. And all the dust from all those machines goes to the same place. That's a really good system. And this building right here behind me, as I turn around, that's his store where he puts his kiln dried lumber. So he's got a store out there. You can come and buy stuff if you want to come buy kiln dried wood. He's got a store out there. And a lot of it's been run through the planer or the motor and it's ready to go. But he does take a lot of uh, different kinds of orders here. He does kiln dried wood. He does uh, flooring, uh, siding. He does shiplap. He does uh, timbers for barns, timbers for crane mats. If you think about a sawmill and if you wrote down everything they could produce and sell, it'd be hard to find something he didn't produce here and sell. I don't think there's anything he doesn't do here. He will saw up a 20 foot two by 10 or an eight foot two by four or a kiln dried one by six, or he'll make flooring. And uh, that's pretty impressive right there. And it's a one man operation. I think he's got some workers that help him, but as far as the uh, principal owner, this is his place and he lives right here on location as well. And he's also got another LT70 back here. Check this one out. Back here behind of his store is another LT70. But this one right here is kind of special. So right there's the unit. And it's not a remote unit. You walk with this sawmill. This is an older 70. I'm not sure what year it is, but it's pretty old. But what makes it special is check that out. I'm not sure how many feet that is. I'll put it down right here. I'll go ask him here in a minute. But that right there, friends, that's a pretty good setup. You could saw 30, 40, 50 foot logs on something like that. And he does have hydraulics right there. And two bunts down, he also has a log clamp and hydraulics as well. It's pretty impressive right there. You don't see that a whole lot. Then as far as the setup goes on this 70, he's got roller tables behind it. And those roller tables go over here and they feed another edger. He's got a cuts edger right there beside the John Deere. I didn't even mention the John Deere. That's another piece of machinery right there. Full size John Deere tractor. All right, guys, it is about eight o'clock. And to be honest with you, I'm wore out. Six hours on the road, standing here in the rain all day. I need to go to the hotel room probably and check in, get some rest because we have two full days of sawing coming up. And the weather tomorrow is supposed to be nice. 30% chance of rain, so we may dodge a bullet. Saturday is supposed to be really nice. But don't worry, if you couldn't make it this year, I'm gonna have the cameras rolling for the next two days so you guys won't miss nothing. That's gonna be a separate video after this one. So thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. Be sure you hit the like button below. And uh, I guess that's about it, I guess. Yep, that's about it.